Hello and welcome back to Mark's Garden UK at Rose Cottage near Nantwich in Cheshire. I've called this video Rose Cottage Garden Design and Update and it's going to do exactly what it says on the tin. Now a lot has happened in my garden since I moved here nine months ago. We're now into September and incidentally it's a Sunday so you'll have to forgive some of the background noises you hear. My neighbours quite naturally are getting on with some of their chores outside so you might just hear some banging in the background. Now if you're new to my channel welcome. I'm going to put a thumbnail for anything I reference in the corner of the screen so that you can go and find it on the channel if you're interested. I'm going to start off today with the parterre and incidentally this is going to be a whistle stop tour at speed at pace because there's a couple of projects I want to get on with this afternoon and I will tell you about those in this video. The formal parterre here at the front of the cottage was planted in the spring, I cleared all the ground, put weed fabric down, planted through it and put three tons of gravel on the top and these box plants were doing incredibly well, books of sempervirant, I planted 300 of them and I added two of my existing topiary plants to the design. Unfortunately we had a very very dry spell in August, we had several periods of drought conditions and I noticed this was starting to suffer, at one point I was concerned that it might be boxed blight or box tree caterpillar but I did some research and I don't think it's that. I think it was just a question of this plant being malnourished and underwatered so I decapitated it all. I took all the tops off, I went round with a pair of secateurs, grabbed it and just cut away and made it a lot shorter and I was hoping that would redress the balance between the roots and the plant above the ground. It is showing some signs of some new growth so I'm hoping that over the winter it will recover and then in the spring it will come back good and strong and I'll leave it again and possibly even trim it in May. I'll keep an eye on it though because if I do notice any sign of blight or caterpillar I'll, I'll give it a good treatment. It's still looking good though nevertheless let's go and have a look at the agapanthus. Now these have given me a spectacular display this summer. Some of them are still in bloom but most of them now have gone over and produced thousands, literally thousands of seed pods. Now I'm going to try something this year that I've never tried before. I'm going to try and propagate them from seed. Apparently it can take up to four years for a plant, a new plant from seed to produce a flower. But I've got four years so I'm going to have a go at it and apparently what you do is you leave them on the plant until they are completely dried out and then you harvest them and sow them. I'll do a video on it, I'll do some research, I'll find out what the best practice is and I'll share it with you. So there's my agapanthus and I will have thousands of seeds so I can afford to, to lose a few and take a risk and then hopefully in two or three years I'll have hundreds if not thousands of agapanthus plants and if you've been watching my channel you know I've entered into a little project, can I make an income from my garden so possibly even I'll start selling agapanthus. Now I've got some news on that uh, project because one of my uh, subscribers uh, notified me that actually you do need a license now to sell plants in the post which was news to me. So I'm looking into that and if I need a license of course I'm going to have to get one. Apparently you can do it as a hobbyist without a license so I've emailed gov to find out what the definition of hobbyist is but it seems that at the scale I probably will want to do it I fall outside of the hobbyist exemption. Anyway Agapanthus watch out for a video coming probably soon on propagating from seed. Now as we leave the parterre at the front of the cottage there's a couple of areas I want to reference in passing. The Trachycarpus fortunii. Several people have asked me about these in the sense that are they planted too close together? I've got three here. I've planted them about a metre apart and technically I would say that probably is a little bit close. I've done it deliberately in the knowledge that I can always move them if I want to. It would be a medium sized job but they are movable. Uh, yes probably six feet apart is probably a better spacing. Now these have not taken off as well as I would I've hoped for or liked but then somebody told me something which I thought was an interesting saying to keep in mind when you move a relatively large plant. Year one they sleep, 
year two they creep and then year three they leap so possibly uh, in the year after next these will really go for it i've had to remove several of the leaves several of them i damaged when i put them in the ground and others uh, were wind damaged i've actually again probably a mistake i've planted them in what i've discovered is quite an exposed position the wind comes through here that's one of the reasons i didn't plant those lovely hydrangea annabelles down here i'll come back to them in a moment over here on my left i've got four box plants now you might think it curious that i've bought four box plants but these were reduced i got them in morrison's and they were selling off reduced stock i'm going to show you some bamboos i also bought in a moment but these believe it or not and they're 18 inches tall were two pound 50 each so 10 pound for four i think that was a good investment let's talk about this little trough this is the old trough which you're probably familiar with i found this buried in the front garden where i've put the parterre so i decided to do something with it and i had a small bowl of semper vivens which i'd had for 15 years and i thought right let's do something with it so i divided them all up and i found there were two different species in there the, the common house plant and the semper vivum arachnoidium i think it's called because it has a little spider's web arachnoidium ar arachnid you can see the connection so i've got five of each in here and i thought that makes quite a nice little feature divided up with gravel in these little terracotta pots you can see a video on my channel let's go and have a look at the olive trees which i rescued again another reduced purchase from morrison's and here they are in these terracotta pots on either side of the the back door it's actually our front door but look these are doing incredibly well again you'll see a video on my channel i think they were 25 pounds initially they were reduced to seven pounds each 14 for the two i did a video on olive tree rescue you can see it on my channel but the results e surprised even me um, so much lovely lush new growth in summary what i did was i took them out of the plastic pot removed all the soil put them into very very well drained soil put a gravel mulch on the top and i pruned them right back i did give the plant a good wash and there's a result a sunny light position and they're gro going great guns i've got four other olive trees just here in this the mediterranean scented border i put a scented border along this path deliberately because that so that when you brush past it and knock it with your feet you'll you'll get those lovely aromas these times have done so well this was one plant i divided it in four and i put it in four places along this path incredible really because the one plant cost me four pounds and i've now got four plants which are all bigger than the original so you know talking of money making schemes i could you know divide and propagate time i did actually take some rosemary cuttings with my, my nephew thomas and we did a video on that you'll see it on my channel the rosemary actually i've just got to come back to this time the time scent that's lifting up off that in this lovely warm sunlight you know early september sunlight and that i'm just getting time and of course i've got lavender here which is another distinctive smell quite wonderful the insects are still going at these lavender flowers anyway getting back to the rosemary i propagated 80 rosemary cuttings with thomas there for a project which i'm going to show you in a moment quite a big project actually we'll come back to that now i mentioned bamboos a moment ago when i was telling you about those reduced price box plants look at this again from morrison's should have been 24 pounds i'll get eight for 40 pounds five pounds each i think that's a bit of a bargain what i'm going to do with those is going to create a boundary along here to separate out the mediterranean border from our social sort of dining area at the back there's also going to be a black painted contemporary looking screen through here as well which will divide that space from this space so there we go uh, reduced price bamboos to form a nice screen and bought this bamboo barrier from todd's so again there's a video in that which i'll show you soon looking forward to seeing how that works now moving round to the rear of the cottage this is the social dining area which i mentioned and there's the rest of those bamboos here is a little shady courtyard 
and this is where we've got all our tree ferns, a collection of seven tree ferns, some of them quite big and some of them quite small, so that you get a different view from different angles. And all around under planted there are hostas and ferns. And mind your own business, a wonderful plant with a, a very strange name. This lovely green carpet is a ground cover plant and I've just done a video on that because that's another one of the projects in my can I make an in from, income from my garden series? I'm going to come back to that in a moment. But here we've got a lovely shady sheltered courtyard, quite cool and damp. And this is where I'm about to create a windy cobbled path. And I'm going to show you that in a video very soon. I'm hoping to do this in the next two days, actually. And the shady tree fern garden leads out here into the tropical exotic border which you've seen in a video which has done incredibly well i've got all kinds of cannas several different types of bananas and setes and mousses i've also got three different types of collocations if you want to know all about that have a look at the video you'll see it on my channel but i'm very pleased with it it won't be long now before i have to start thinking about digging up the ansette marillii for winter protection i'll probably also dig up the Metallica Colocasia. Some plants I'm going to leave in and risk it and give them a chance, but I will mulch them very heavily. Let's go and have a look at the Colocasia farm. And this, to me, has been a resounding success. Just look at the size of some of these leaves. All these plants, and I've counted them, there are 24, came from one plant which I bought four years ago, and these are still growing and growing strong. You can see several videos on these on my channel. They're planted into very wet, very rich, manure-enriched soil, and they're throwing out leaves at a rate of knots. These two here were part of that Can I Make an Income from My Garden experiment, another one of the three projects I've done so far. I posted these out to myself to see if they can survive the journey out and back again. I cut the leaves off, I've repotted them already on this one. Quite exciting news actually. There's a new leaf starting to appear here on the shaft of this previous leaf. So I think they're already growing. I'm leaving them here in the warmth of the sunlight and I'm keeping them moist. So Colocasia escalenta, all these are for sale and you can buy one but I have to get around that licensing, that UK plant passport problem that I've come up against. But uh, I will get around it. I've already emailed them and I'll wait for a response. These are the hydrangeas. Hydrangea Annabelle. And I've got three of these in a line here. This one has just been pruned literally three weeks ago, hard back. And look at this already. Lovely lush green growth. This one here wasn't pruned. I didn't prune that one because it still had some lovely blooms on it. It was a, a point I learnt actually that these are not very resistant to wind. And when I came back one weekend from a trip, the other two, all the blooms had blown over. For some reason, this wasn't caught. Anyway, I'll trim that back as well. And I'll have three quite nice little round hydrangea bushes. I've got an idea for these, for a garden, for a white garden, which I'm going to share with you shortly. Uh, but when these do go into that white garden, and I'm going to take some cuttings off them, so I'm going to multiply them, so I've got several of them, uh, I will be using metal plant stakes to support them, because I don't want them all to be blown over and bashed and damaged. Let's go and have a look at the veg plot, some interesting news. On the way to the veg plot, which is in the compound, let's just stop here and in passing have a look at this little trough I made for the spare sempervivans. It's just two pieces of wood screwed together with a batten and I put gritty soil in and I planted them all out. I think there's about 50 here. Again, these are going to come back and probably spread out and multiply and I'll be able to sell these. In fact, case in point, there's one that's already starting to propagate itself. That is new growth. Just noticed it. So, Semper Vivans, common house leak, for sale. Send me a message if you're interested. <laughs> if you've been watching my videos, you may recall that I made a few mistakes with the veg plot, my first time veg grower. So it's a learning curve. And one of the mistakes I made was over sowing the seeds. I had hundreds of little lettuces in this little container and hundreds in this one. And there were just too many. And I didn't thin them out, which was my bad, my mistake. I should have thinned them out. So anyway, I virtually gave up on them, but then I decided I'd try and rescue a few. So I kept the best Lola Rossos back, the best little gems back, and the, I actually managed to keep only one iceberg lettuce. Anyway, 
Isn't nature wonderful and powerful and strong in the sense that it comes back? It's resilient. These lettuces have come back. I think that one's actually bolting and possibly even going to seed. But look, lettuce leaves here from plants which I thought were completely wasted and gone. Quite happy about that. Artichokes next. Let's have a look. Again, a reduced price bargain. Um, some more lettuces in here. I decided to use the space. You can see them here look, doing quite well. But these three artichokes were five pounds each. They were reduced globe artichokes as opposed to Jerusalem. And I gave them a chance and I planted them. I did a lovely video on them where I actually cooked the artichokes that were on the plants I bought. Look, they've already started to sprout back. And actually, this one here at the back on its own, which was one plant, has now produced three plants. I've got two there. And the third one here, which is down here, is actually producing a new little artichoke flower. Now, it's the flower that you eat before it's opened up, but if you don't eat them, if you don't cut them off, they become fantastic flowers full of nectar for insects. I'm going to leave this one. I don't know if we'll have enough time before the end of the summer for that to produce an edible fruit. Anyway, let's see. But there we are. These artichokes are going to be taken out of this tub, divided and planted into my wildflower meadow next year. They grow to about six or seven foot tall. They're structural and architectural plants, and they really will be a great feature in towering up above out of the next year's wildflower meadow. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with the wildflower meadow in a moment. It's quite interesting. This was a sweet fennel, which I found growing in the drive. A lovely sort of aniseed flavor. And you can eat the leaves, the stalks, and the roots. Let's go and have a look at the wildlife garden where I've got my wildlife pond in progress and the wildflower meadow. But in passing, let's pay a visit here to the area behind the shed, between the garage and the shed. This is the bathtub where I'm attempting to propagate the mind your own business. If you want to know what that's all about, there's a video on my channel. And there are the rosemary cuttings, which I did with Thomas. They look as if they're all growing and as part of that video, I also put some in water, just to see how they would get on in water. And I don't know if you can see it, but in that glass there, there are several roots growing out of the rosemary. Can you see? So if that's already rooted, I imagine that these 80 rosemary plants, which I'm growing for a project, will also have rooted. So I've got to give Thomas some credit for that. So here we are at the wildlife pond, still a work in progress. I'm quite relaxed about that. It was never going to be done overnight. And here is the wildflower meadow and it's gone over. But at the top of each and every one of these almost dead plants is a seed head. I'm going to cut them all down. I'm going to gather them all up. And I was going to put them on top of that mound there and bash them so that the seeds fell out. But I'm actually changing my mind on that. I'm going to put them on a sheet of polythene in a room above the, my garage and let them dry out. And then I'm going to agitate them in the springtime and hopefully lots of seeds will fall onto that piece of polythene. And the reason I'm doing that is twofold. I'm going to have some of the seeds, but my neighbor who has been helping me out in the garden, filling a skip with his mini digger, has got some woodland in Wales with a, a patch of earth and I'm going to donate some of these seeds to that patch of earth and hopefully they'll get, they'll get a little wildflower meadow in Wales too. So this is ongoing, a wildlife pond. I predict that within two weeks the hole will be dug and finished and I'll be buying the liner so stay tuned if you're interested in wildlife ponds. I'm not going to put any plants in it this year. I'm going to fill it full of water, which I'm going to harvest off the garage roof, garage roof and I'm going to let the water settle in. Let's go and have a look at my disastrous no-dig veg plot. Now I say disastrous, it's not that disastrous. It's been a massive learning curve. So in, in that respect, it's been a success. And what I learned was I've got to protect my vegetables from butterflies, because as you can see, they're absolutely completely destroyed by them. I'm going to write it off. I have got some tomatoes growing on these vines. Uh, I was advised at the weekend to cut the tops off. And again, at the first time, uh, for me, I'm just playing around at it. Uh, and next year, I'm going to take it more seriously. My brassicas, I can forget them for this year. I will harvest a few small tomatoes off these tomato vines. I'll cover this for the winter. 
and then I'll start again next spring. Put it down to experience. I've enjoyed it, but I've had a really busy year. You know, just moved into a new house and there's been so much going on. And sometimes you turn your back for a minute and this is what happens. I'm going to tell you about a couple of other projects now, uh, which uh, I've got ongoing. And one of the things I have learned uh, this year here is that sometimes if you start too many projects in one go, if you're not careful, it can get on top of you. Nevertheless, <laughs> I've started another project. We've had a new kitchen and bathroom inside the cottage and this area is where all the rubbish has gravitated to. So anyway, there's the skip that Mark helped me fill. And that, this is now in the process of getting cleared out. There was a raised bed there, which I've dismantled. I'm taking that soil away from the bottom of this big apple tree. So that will be leveled. I've put an uplighter in down there. So this looks quite spectacular at night. And then this will lead through into an area here, going back towards the cottage where I'm going to have, I'm going to divide it off with a holly hedge, which I'm going to take cuttings to create. And then this will be a lovely formal area with utopiary and a rill. I'm going to model it a little bit on a garden, a garden at High Grove, which sounds a little bit grand, but nevertheless, that's what I'm going to do. And also a garden at Woolerton Old Hall. But that's a project very much for next spring, summer. I'm going to get the wildlife pond finished next. So there we go. A whistle stop guided tour of Rose Cottage Garden. Another decision I've made is it's time to start thinking about dividing the whole space into rooms. Uh, because at the moment I've got one big open plan plot. I feel as if I've started off at the cottage and I'm radiating out outwards into the garden. What I want to do next is think about dividing the area up into garden rooms. This formal room will be one of them. And then there'll be the productive vegetable area here, the wildlife area down there. And I want to find a way of sectioning it off so that you can go from one room to another. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell if you want to hear about future developments in my garden. And comment below because, as I always say, it's lovely to hear from you. Nice to know that there's someone out there watching the videos. I do try and answer every message. I am a little bit behind at the moment, apologies, but I will be doing it in the full course of time and I'll see you soon.